Hey guys, Simply Betty here. So today I'm doing something kind of fun. I'm making another planted tank. And this is part of the Fish Room Beautification Project. I've mentioned it a million times. If you haven't been watching my channel, I've been doing a project where I've been taking all of my kind of ugly, kind of blah looking tanks and making them into really nice planted tanks. Part of my goal for this year is to make my aesthetic better, like around my house and around my fish tanks. And I feel like making my fish tanks pretty is going to do that. And plants make me happy. I love planting. I love aquascapes. So I, th I just think this is a good thing to do. So today I'm doing something kind of fun. I'm making a planted tank, one of my 20 gallon highs, and I'm actually making it a 100% crypt tank. I'm using a bunch of different varieties of crypts, which are some really easy beginner friendly root feeder plants um, that I'll, you know, I'll show a bunch of examples, but they're a great beginner plant and I wanna show that you can make a beautiful tank with these. I'm using the excuse of filming, but I'm actually upstairs eating gummy bears. If I don't wanna share my gummy bears, I have to hide from my toddler when I eat them. Nobody tell my three-year-old I'm eating gummy bears alone. <laughs> don't you type those nasty comments. Sometimes moms just need a little bit of alone time, just a tiny amount of time to eat some sour gummy bears in peace. Mm, so good. That's so much better. Okay, I'm gonna get off my butt get to work on this cool crypt tank. Let's go. This here is where a bunch of my plants are gonna be coming from. This is my immersed plant setup. Um, what immersed means is that these plants, these aquatic plants are grown out of water. So what I have here is I have, you know, just humidity domes and regular old nursery trays and then some LED plant lights. And I'm basically, you know, growing my own plants in this little setup. I'll take the light off here. Well, let me remove this humidity dome. So check this out. I have a nice full batch back here of a crypt and it's called Crypt Florida Sunset. It's green right now probably because it's been growing immersed and not underwater. But this plant should be a really nice kind of reddish pink color, very vibrant. Uh, it's a relatively newer plant, kind of harder to find, but my goal is to get an entire tray uh, growing of this. So I'll, I'll take a few plants out of here to put in my new crypt tank under this next dome here. Put that plant light aside. Under here I have a little bit of a variety. I have some red crypt wenty here in the front, also some micro sword, I think narrow leaf growing kind of amongst it. I have some green crypt wenty right back there. I also have AR mini stems growing pretty well that I have for sale on my website. And back here is crypt wenty bronze, I believe. I'll be using some of these plants. This is my immersed Anubius setup. It's kind of an experiment just to see how Anubius would do. And you know, it's, it's doing okay, not the best. I'm probably actually gonna throw all these plants just into a tank. And then this last one over here in the corner, I have Crypt Lutea. And a, per, a good amount of it. It's kind of a, a more delicate looking crypt, a little bit smaller, a nice, nice feeling, a nice texture to it. More petite, but not nearly as petite as something like Crypt Parva. I need one more gummy bear. <laughs> so good. So this is my Crypt Florida Sunset in here. But these plants really took off for me. I'm, I'm gonna have to thin these out soon and kind of spread them over into this side because they're looking great. But I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and take a few out for the new 20 gallon. This is my notorious little aquatic plant eater right here. I have my eye on you, Phoebe. So I'm, oh, thanks honey. That's my little girl. No, not right now, okay? Let's not water the plants right now. <laughs> <laughs> You're funny. So I'm gonna take out one of these middle ones. Oh yeah, they've been doing great in my setup. Beautiful plant right here. <laughs> this is my Crypt Wenty Red. So originally I had it sitting in a big pot and I just took the big chunk out and put it in here. I feel like I'm gonna have a hard time getting this Crypt Wenty Red out. So it doesn't look super red right now. Keep in mind this is an immersed form. And a lot of times plants aren't quite as colorful um, when grown out of water versus in water with high light and high CO2. All right, I plucked a whole bunch of plantlets off the sides of my plants, and we're gonna put this in the fish tank. We're gonna see if the red color comes back into these leaves because they definitely don't look red. I have something like seven plantlets in here. This Crypt Wenty green of mine kind of looks small and shrimpy, but I'm still gonna try to take a few of these plantlets out and hopefully it'll really get nice and bounce back in a tank. 
Okay, I think I picked out uh, a nice amount of these plantlets. Here's another variety of Wenty I have. This is Wenty Bronze. It's kind of a, a rusty reddish color. And you can see even in the Emerst form, um, you can see that rusty color in the leaves. Okay, there we go. I have a nice amount of Crypt Wenty Bronze. Now I left a few because I'd like to keep these growing Emerst just, just for fun, just as a backup. I probably have to redo these and organize these a little bit better. Phoebe, don't you dare think about eating my nice plants. Um, but that's gonna have to be for a future video. Maybe I'll do that next month or so, kind of revamp a little bit my Emerst setup. Getting out my Crypt Lutea is a little bit easier, and it's because these are all in their own individual pots. If you look carefully, these are all uh, reused Keurig coffee machine cups that I just wanted to recycle but I have a nice amount of Crypt Lutea all in these convenient little cups. One, two, three. These will be more of the foreground plants, I think. So I think I'll start out with six of these nice little pots. So obviously now I'm gonna clean my plants. I grew them in potting soil, and so I don't want like a bunch of potting soil to get into my tanks. It could create some algae problems if I got dirt in there, at least, you know, that's what I think. Maybe getting a few specks isn't that big of a deal, but. I just want some nice clean plants starting off. The green wenty was really easy to clean because I just plucked these out of the dirt, the little plantlets, they just needed a rinse. So I'll just set those aside in a little piece of paper towel. Be sure to keep your aquatic plants wet. Uh, don't let them dry out as you're working with them. The bronze is also cleaned up really well because I just plucked those out of the dirt too. The lutea is going to be a little harder because they're in these little cups and there's a whole bunch of roots growing out. There we go. Okay, that was a lot of effort for one clean plant, but I have one clean Crypt Lutea. This is a really nice one. There's tons of nice plantlets coming off of this pot. My Crypt Wenty Red is, you know, pretty clean. I don't have to do much there. But then my Crypt Florida Sunset is not. Oh God, look how nice that is. It's such a nice plant. But this isn't nearly as like hard packed or with as dense of a root system as the Crypt Lutea, which is much older. So this one pot of Crypt Florida Sunset, let's see. So I'm just going to really gently pull apart some of these plants so I can space them out in my new tank. So there's one, two, three, four. This is the next pot, five, six, Okay, three pots gave me nine plants. They've been growing for quite a while though in that setup. Great. I have some people coming over for dinner in a few minutes and my kitchen's just full of dirt and mud and I'm, I have to wrap this up. Too bad I spoiled my appetite with gummy bears. Okay, I'm back. I had a nice dinner with a bunch of people. Back to doing fun stuff. So I've pretty much gone over all of the crypts that I uh, grow here at home and that, that I've had available that I'm gonna use for this tank. And so now um, I'll show some of the ones that I'm gonna use that I had to buy. Actually, these ones are from Rob from Flip Aquatics. I didn't buy these. He sent these as a nice contribution. Thank you so much, Rob. This is a Crypt Spiralis. This is a really cool one because if you look, this is very tall, very grassy looking Crypt. It looks a lot different than a lot of other ones. It's just, it's neat. It's, it's gonna be a nice different feel, a different, look, a different texture in there. So this nice Crypt Spiralis, it looks like I can divide this into a few plantlets. One, two. When you're looking at Crypts, it's pretty easy to see when a new plant has formed versus when it hasn't. Four, five Crypt Spiralis. He also sent me some Crypt Flamingo, which is this really pretty pinkish looking Crypt that I'm so excited to get into my tank and see what happens. But then I can't forget to mention my Crypt Parva he also sent me, which is the smallest variety of Crypt that you can readily get. It's a really nice one, like it takes a long time to grow, but this will eventually carpet and have this really nice kind of little lawn look. Out of those two pots, I got 22 Crypt Parva plantlets. That's really good. <laughs> I think we should go put this tank together now. Everything's pretty much ready. Now I can go ahead and put this tank together. This tank behind me, um, it's one of my 20 gallon highs. Um, I'm using one of my old lights. I think this is a Phoenix. It's a little too big, but I'm just gonna have to live with it. I'm using a new kind of substrate for this tank. It's one that I've never used before, but it's a really high quality one. This is a substrate line from Brightwell Aquatics. And as of filming this tank, it's my first time using this planted tank substrate. 
One thing I found interesting that made me want to try it is that, like ADA Aquasoil, this substrate's great for tanks where you want to reduce the alkalinity of your water. Bettas will thrive in this, especially many types of wild bettas that require more acidic conditions. Also, it's a great way to keep many species of shrimp that prefer these parameters and really any species of, of plant or animal that likes more acidic conditions. But unlike ADA Aquasoil, this substrate does not need to cycle before adding fish. The ADA substrate, it's known to release ammonia when you first put it into a tank. So you, you put it in, you need to let it sit for a while uninhabited. But with this florin volcanite, there isn't an ammonia release. There are a few different layers that I'm going to use. Florin-based laterite powder is the bottommost layer. It's a clay powder concentrate that's mineral rich, especially in iron, which is really great for plants. Then there's a larger and more gravelly florin base laterin substrate that goes on top of the powder. It's another really mineral rich base layer for my plants. It's looking a little bit dusty in there. I'll let the dust settle down for a bit, but I went ahead and I put a nice even layer over the first layer. The best, the most even that I could. Uh, now we'll move on to the next step. Laterin substrate F. This time I'll be using a little cup to put it in just to make it a little bit easier on my hands. Okay, I added that layer. Um, it's a lot more gravelly. The main substrate is called Florin Volcanic and comes in a few colors. There's a dark brown and a blackish. This is a volcanic ash based substrate that's rich in nutrients available for plants, especially root feeders like the crypts that are going to be in this tank. It's getting kind of late and I'm getting kind of tired, so I hope I rinsed it well enough. If not, it might make my water a little bit cloudy, but I guess it's not that big of a deal. Okay, I got the substrate in. It took me way longer than it should have, but it's just because of my ouchy wrists. I'm moving I'm really, I'm moving pretty slow, and it's getting late, and I'm getting tired, but I have to get these plants in. I just, I just have to get them in and get it done and fill it up with water so I can go to bed. I get up pretty early in the morning with, with my toddler, so I get kind of tired when it becomes after midnight. I'm telling myself if I can just power through it, I get my last three gummy bears. So I gotta do it, I have to do this. I did it, I did it. It's super early in the morning now, I'm exhausted. I had my last gummy bears, time for bed. So here's the crypt tank. I gave it about a week before I went ahead and filmed my outro here because I wanted to give the plants a little bit of time to settle in before I, you know, I did my outro. I'm really happy with how all the plants are doing. You can see they're actually purling right now. They're pretty happy. I'm not sure I've seen crypts purl before, but yeah, all the plants are doing great. Well, except for the Crypt Pink Flamingo, you can see I have some definite melt up here at the front. That's completely normal. Nothing is wrong when crypts melt back. It just means that the plant was taken from one environment, it was put into another, so it's shedding its leaves. It's going to go ahead and uh, make some new leaves. You can actually see some little baby leaves down there. Melting is completely normal when it comes to crypts. I'm actually expecting probably the big Crypt Florida Sunset to really melt back a little bit, but so far it hasn't shown any signs. I'm very surprised. I definitely see some of the Crypt Lutea losing some leaves. No big deal, it's all part of the process. Maybe it was a little bit silly putting my big Crypt Florida Sunset in the middle of the tank versus in the background, but I'm really expecting in the background the Crypt Wenty bronze and the green to really perk up and grow in and get nice and tall. So I think this tank's gonna turn out really cool. It just needs a little bit of time to grow in. Crypts are very slow growing plants, very low maintenance, but definitely slow growing. 
Thanks so much for watching guys. I'm excited about my crypt tank. I think it's gonna be really cool. And I'd actually, I'd like to do another crypt tank coming up soon, just crypts and only like the remaining varieties that I don't currently own. So I wanna like complete my collection. It's collectoritis, but it's a harmless collectoritis in my opinion. That's what I tell myself, it's how I sleep at night. I'm also excited to see how this florin substrate does. I wanna see if the if the red crypts that I have, like the Crypt Pink Flamingo and the Crypt Florida Sunset and the Crypt Red and the Crypt Wenty Bronze, like I wanna see if those colors just come out so strong even with no CO2 because I have such a nutrient rich substrate. So the Florin substrate, looking forward to seeing how that uh, performs with the Crypt Tank, I'm sure it'll be amazing. And then maybe I'll do another one, another Crypt Tank. So thanks so much for watching guys, be sure to like and subscribe and have a great day.